وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وارزقنا علما وزدني علما او الله grant us benefit in what you are what you have taught us and teach us useful knowledge and provide us with knowledge and increase us in knowledge amin ya rabbal alamin allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'altahu sahla wa anta taj'alu al hazna iza shi'ta sahla o allah nothing is easy except what you have made easy if you wish you can make the difficulty easy i mean so inshallah we will open our lesson i'll share my screen with you i hope you're all doing well bismillah <clears throat> arrahman arrahim rabbi najini min alqawmi zalimin my lord deliver me from these unjust people رب اني لما انزلت الي من خير فقير ماي لورد اي ام فور وات ايفر گڈ يو سين داون تو مي ان نيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي ماي لورد اكسپاند فور مي ماي بريست ان ود اشورنس اند ايز فور مي ماي فاس كان ان تاي ذا نوت فروم ماي تنگ ذات دي مي انڈرسٹینڈ ماي سپيچ اني عزت بربي وربكم من كل متكبر لا يؤمن بيوم الحساب Indeed, I have sought refuge in my Lord and your Lord from every arrogant one who does not believe in the day of account. A'uzu billahi an akuna min al-jahilin. I seek refuge in Allah from being among the ignorant. Rabbi inni zalam tu nafsi faqfirli. My Lord, I have wronged myself, so forgive me. Rabbi nasrif anna azab jahannam inna azabha kana gharama. O our Lord. a word from us torment of hell really its torment is permanent and it is an evil abode indeed um, as a place to rest in rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa zurriyyatina qurrata ayuni wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama our rabb o oh, our lord bestow on us from our spouses and our offspring the coolness of our eyes and make us the leaders of the muttaqun amin ya rabbal alamin so inshallah we'll start with sira today um sira inshallah so last uh la- the week before last week uh, we covered our mother khadija radiyallahu and i hope you all listen to that she is one of the uh, w- uh, women of janna and she is uh, uh, one of the um of course most pious one of the most pious women um allah subhanahu wa taala has praised her uh, has um, sent her her Uh, salam so that's really um, an honor for our mother khadija and she was one of the most um, you know strong supporter and, and comfort for our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so inshallah um, today we will um, move on to the dispute of uh, black stone so our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam got married to our mother khadija and he had a, a beautiful life now he was a man Uh, who had a status i mean or he was always um, he has always been a very uh, you know honest man and from a noble family a noble person with a beautiful character and now allah has bestowed him with a wife who had a beautiful character and be- a, a very wealthy woman woman and she, so rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is now established man in uh, makkah and now um, look at uh, what happens When Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was thirty-five years old, a devastating flood damaged the Kaaba. The walls of the Kaaba had been weakened by the fire earlier, and the flood caused additional cracks to form. And the structure revered by Quraysh was in danger of collapse. So, um, because we should remember that Makkah uh, is a valley, and there are mountains surrounding it, um, and Kaaba is at the middle of it. So, the when the flood came, uh, there was so much water in in the Haram that Kaaba got damaged. now this was in ruin and quraish decided to rebuild the kaaba now they resolved not to tame the project with resources gained through 
um, different ashari prostitution and larceny, which means it's haram ways. So even though they were non, they were kafir, they were not Muslims. When they were, when it came to building the house of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, they decided that we will only use the pure money because they used to do haram stuff, and they knew it was wrong. But they, I mean, they, they were, you know, they were not Muslims. And Subhanallah, in in our times we live, we see that, in, especially in non-Muslim countries, and sometimes in Muslim countries, people do earn living through haram means, and they don't, um, they still, you know, use it. But they know that it's haram. So uh, they decided we are not going to use any kind of wrong money. We will only use the money that is hard uh, earned by hard work and it's halal. So when they started uh, making Kaaba, as the walls of Kaaba were uh, being built, um, they feared that Allah would punish anyone who raised his hand against the sacred. Walid bin Mughira was the first to approach Kaaba. So they, they didn't want to destroy the, you know, they didn't want to uh, like destroy the walls because they were really scared that it, they knew it was the house of Allah. So Walid bin Mughira, who was um, one of the leaders of Banu Maghzum and he is the father of Khalid bin Walid, he said, um, Allah will not destroy reformers. He said that, you know, we are not destroying this uh, house of Allah to destroy it. We are just taking it down so we can build it again. So we are reforming it. So he began to dismantle the walls of Kaaba. So when the other sources, everyone stood back and they said, if Wali dies or something happens to Wali, we are not going to touch the walls of Kaaba. But, um, you know, when they saw that well, nothing happened to Wali, uh, they went ahead and they demolished the Kaaba down to its original foundation laid by Ibrahim alayhi salam. And then the construction started with each tribe was given um, a space uh, and allowed uh, an all, uh, allotted specific duty uh, and space to do. So someone was supposed to, um, you know, work with the wall. Someone was supposed to mix all of the things to uh, put the wall together and so forth. So the nobles among them carried pieces of stone and piled them up in one place. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his uncle Abbas were among those who were carrying stones. So this was what they were doing. A Roman mason named Bahum reconstructed the walls. And however, the tribes were unable to collect enough money to rebuild Kaaba completely. So original, if we, uh, I don't know how many of you know that, but originally Kaaba was not uh, like a cube. It was not like the foundations were not square. It, they were rectangle. It was quite uh, like, it was like a rectangle. So, uh, but they did not have enough money to build because remember they were using the halal money. So they, they, they couldn't build uh, the, khan, the khan e Kaaba on the foundations of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So they decided to build it. Um, they just built it as um, a cube. And what they did, they, this, so what they did was a small was built, wall, uh, wall was built showing the boundaries of the original foundation laid by Ibrahim alayhi salam. Because they couldn't build the whole building, the whole, uh, like, you know, big, uh, rectangle so they they just uh, showed the boundaries so the, they raised the boundaries so they could people could see what were the original foundations of Ibrahim alayhi salam and then this small wall was enclosed in area about uh, six cubits on the northern side of Kaaba and it's called Hijra Ismail uh, when the wall was completed up to the spot where the black stone al Hajar al Asfat was located a dispute arose so just one thing before we go into uh, the dispute, when they built that, so, you know, even now when people go in uh, do the Hajj or Umrah, the place which is called Hatim actually was in the, the part of the inside of uh, original uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam's Kaaba. But uh, they could not build it on the foundations of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So that part is still open. And people, you know, if you know, if any one of you have gone there, we all know that Hatim is one place where everyone wants to pray to Raqqa. At least they want to go stand there because it's actually considered the inside part of Kaaba. And it is Allah's blessing in one way because not many people can enter the Kaaba itself. So even if you go and stand inside that open space, which is called Hatim, that was originally the inside of Kaaba. So um, um, it is a blessing in some ways for all of us who are not able to enter the Kaaba. Um, anyway, and now what happened was when the wall was completed up to the spot where the black stone Al-Hijr al, al was located, 
a dispute arose because they knew that this black stone um, was a special stone. So each chieftain claimed the honor of putting the black stone in place. The crisis continued for four or five days. So everyone said, I am going to put the stone. Now everyone started fighting and they, they used to do that a lot. And then it was so much so that people thought that they will start killing each other. It was, and the work was stopped for five days. So there was one man at that time, his name was Abu Umayya. He was oldest among them. He found a solution. They were wise people, but they used to get angry and start fighting sometimes. He suggested that next man who entered the Kaaba, uh, gate of Kaaba should be given the authority to settle the dispute. So now they were fighting and they were about to kill each other for that. That this man said, okay, let's do one thing. Anyone who enters the, this, um, the haram, um, first man, we will ask him to put this um, black stone up. And they all agreed. They said, okay, fine. Then, because nobody knew who would, but what Allah did was, Allah, by the will of Allah, the next man to enter was, the gate was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entered and he had no idea what was happening. So when they saw him, they said, it's Muhammad. They, they, uh, they said, saw him, when they saw him coming, since he's the trustworthy, he's Al-Ameen, we will agree to abide by his decision, right? So uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given the authority that, okay, what he, whatever he decides, we will agree. And they knew Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uh, character, they were so happy to see him. Even the people who would later become his enemy, they loved him because how honest he was. So when Muhammad Sallallahu learned the details of the dispute, he asked them to bring a sheep. And Rasulullah Sallallahu again, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala blessed him with so much wisdom that he said, okay, bring a big sheet, um, a cloth. And then he said, he took the black stone and he placed it. And then he asked each clan, each tribe to hold the edge of the sheet. So everyone picked up one of the side and they, uh, they held one of the side, all the tribes, and then they lifted it, all right? When the black stone was lifted up by the tribal chieftains, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pushed it into the place with his own hands. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, through his wisdom, was able to get everyone because everyone wanted to lift this stone. So they all lifted it in that sheet and our Prophet Sallallahu picked it up and put it. Everyone was satisfied with Muhammad Sallallahu decision and a great conflict was averted. So always uh, looking at Rasulullah Sallallahu always, we will see even after he becomes a prophet, try to find a solution which was, which was, uh, which, uh, through which he could avoid conflicts. All right. The black stone rests upon about one and a half meters above the ground with Kaaba's, with the Kaaba door about half a meter above the black stone. The Quraysh did not lower the position of the door because they did not want anyone to enter the Kaaba without their permission. They also doubled the height of the walls from nine to 18 cubits, added a roof and, and six pillars in, into the, in two rows inside the Kaaba to support it. So they made a very good, strong structure, right? Um, and then, why is it that people loved Prophet Sallallahu so much? We know that, that from childhood, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi was exceptionally intelligent and chaste. And what does chaste mean? That he was a very pure uh, char uh, character. He would try to always be nice and kind to people uh, and was highly regarded for his honesty. Weller, he was a very brave man. He was a very honest child and a man. Justice. Piety, patience, modesty, loyalty, and hospitality. Even before Rasulullah became a prophet, he had all these qualities. He used to love the orphans. He used to help everyone in need. He was very just, and he was very quiet, and he was very patient. If things bad things happened to him, he would never complain about it. And people loved it. You know, if we see these kind of people, even if nowadays, if you see someone, even if we don't know them, but we see that how nice they are, how honest they are. These are the qualities that are admired by everyone, even by non-Muslims. Abu Talib described his beloved nephew in the following words. He is fair and handsome. From his visage, uh, mercy falls like rain. He is a shelter for the orphan and a protector of the widows. What does it mean? When you look at him from his 
uh, you know, he he's gentle, he's kind. He, mercy falls uh, like rain means he's always whenever he's around people, people are happy, and he is a shelter for the orphan. And he always helped the orphan people. Even so, Rasulullah was not one day he was sitting and then he gave, became a prophet. No, he was an active member of the society. He was a young teenager who would go out and help people, who would listen to people, who would care about uh, poor people. He was always like, you know, he was very young when he signed that document we talked about, Hateful Fuel. Um, so Rasulullah Muhammad maintained good relations with his family, poor others, burdens and guided the destitute towards self-sufficiency. He, he, was, he was very respectful, respectful to all the elders of Quraysh and especially his family members. And he always helped anyone who needed any help. Um, you know, uh, whether it was someone who uh, wanted to um, get help to carry some heavy load, orphans, everyone, he, he helped everyone, okay? In keeping his future, um, uh, keeping with his future role as Allah's messenger, one who was to outlaw all the aspects of idolatry and polytheism. Muhammad had inherent hatred for prevailing paganism of his time. What it means is that even though everyone around him used to worship um, idols, Rasulullah never worshipped idols in his life. He, he did not like it. He would not eat. So, you know, he would go into the gatherings and people would uh, sacrifice animals in the name of the idols like Alat and Uzza, but Rasulullah would, Sallam, would never eat from that food uh, on which the name of the idols was taken, even though he was not a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that point. Thus, although he was an integral part of his society, but he was a very, still he was, he was considered a very, look, we can see uh, a, a, an important part of the society. We can see at the dispute of the Blackstone book, all these people who were fighting were the, the elders of Quraysh. They were much older than Rasulullah and they were really powerful men. But when they saw Prophet and when he gave a decision, they all agreed to it. Why did they agree to it? Because they, they loved him and they trusted him because he was a sadiq and al-ameen, the honest and the trustworthy one and the truthful one, right? So everyone loved him. Muhammad never attended any of the important uh, important local festivals and fairs that revolve around idol worship and drinking. So they used to do a lot of fair where they used to go and worship their gods and all. But Rasulullah never um, attended those places where they were drink, drinking alcohol or they were worshipping idols. He was also careful not to eat the flesh of any animal slaughtered in the name of someone other than Allah and avoided touching or even coming close to idols. He especially detested hearing oaths sworn upon the pagans, uh, God. So, you know, they used to swear by, like people swear by Allah, they used to swear by idols. And Rasulullah did not like that at all, right? So, um, with that, inshallah, we'll uh, stop. I would like, your homework would be to actually look at um, the the Shamail. It, so, the, what, the, prof, uh, um, the, the good, the qualities of Rasulullah were collected uh, um, by scholars and they are called Shamail um, and his, uh, you know, um, his beautiful characteristics. And uh, they are uh, in Shamail at Tirmazi. It's one of the books of a hadith. And um, um, the Tirmazi was the one who also collected hadith. So he did a book on Shamail of Prophet. Uh, but um, inshallah, I'll share something which you can look at. Uh, but the the qualities and the character of Rasulullah cannot be described in, in a short class. But we will start, and we have started, and inshallah, throughout the seerah, when we study, we will see the high morals and the beautiful character of Rasulullah Not only was he the most uh, honest and amazing person, but he was the most humble person as well. Anyone who sat with Rasulullah he always felt special. That is one of the most important characteristic of Rasulullah Although he was, he is the most special person, but he would make others feel very happy, special about themselves and good about themselves. And, and that is the sign of great people that when you sit with them, you feel good about yourself. You don't feel bad about yourself. And Rasulullah was is a mercy to humanity. Um, and, and he had the most amazing characteristic. And he was someone who knew how to 
um, not only look after and care for people, but he would know if anyone uh, was sad, even though when he became a prophet, he had so many people who would be always around him, but he would know if anyone amongst them was sad or unhappy, he would want to make them smile. So he was one of the kindest and is the one of the, he is, he always will be, but in his time, he was the kindest man and people loved him. Inshallah, um, so your homework will be to just research a little bit about that and uh, write down the characteristics and what do you think about it? Just write a little bit about it and uh, how do you perceive Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through what we have done and inshallah, I'll send some material which you can look at, inshallah. Uh, so with that, uh, we finish. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad wa barik wa sallam. Salli wa alayhi. So inshallah with that, um, uh, we stop here. Uh, <clears throat> so we did the incident of the black stone and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa character. Um, so with this, inshallah, before we start our new topic, I want to ask if there are any questions from last Uh, from the last uh, class, if uh, there are, is everything clear, we'll we'll do a quick. Um, I what I was thinking was that we will do a quick recap before I go into uh, the new topic as well. So as as all of you know that there are three kinds of words in Arabic: ism, harf, and fail. And we are focusing on ism, right? So. Um, Ism is the name of person, place, thing, idea, adjective, adverb, and more. Okay. The word that is not a fail or an is harf is always an ism. So I'm not going to fail and harf at the moment. And then let's look at ism. So ism has four properties, status, number, gender, and type. All right. So Arab, Adad, Jins, and Qism. Uh, four properties of an ism. So, inshallah, well, once we done, once we are finished with all the uh, pro, four properties of an ism, we will be looking at this an ism, and we will be able to tell what it is, right? So, then we looked into arab, um, and we know that um, and or status, which is uh, the four properties of ism, are like four wheels of a car. Every ism has four properties. Just remember that. So, you know, again, I'm not going to go into detail. We will only look at status, but it's status, gender, number, and type. Um, all right. Status, number, gender, and type. Inshallah, we'll do it in that order. And then we did Rafa. Rafa is a doer. Um, and uh, Nasb is uh, the detail. And Jer is the word after of. And how do we tell um, the status? By the ending sounds. First step is ending combination. First, always looking at the end, ending combination. And then second is to look at the ending sounds o, uh, on, uh, an, an or e in. Um, and we did the Muslim chart, Muslim one, Muslim one, Muslim in, Muslimani, Muslimaini, Muslimaini, Muslimuna, Muslimina, Muslimina. And then feminine Muslim chart, Muslimatun, Muslimatan, Muslimatin, Muslimatani, Muslimataini, Muslimataini, Muslimatun, Muslimatin, Muslimatin. And then we did light versus heavy, that is default of an SM is always heavy. An ism can be made light by removing an extra noon sound, removing the tanween. Tanween are the two uh, haraka you see on top of, uh, or on um, like, you know, the, the top of the word or at the bottom. Uh, remove the extra noon also, uh, and that's how you make it light. There are four reasons for ism to be light. We have not done all of them. We know that partly flexible ism are light and categorical negation, if you remember. But don't worry too much about this at the point, right? And then the light Muslim chart is what? Muslimu, Muslima, Muslimi, Muslima, Muslimai, Muslimai, Muslimu, Muslimi, Muslimi. And then feminine is Muslimatu, Muslimata, Muslimati, Muslimata, Muslimatai, Muslimatai. And then Jama is Muslimatu, Muslimati, Muslimati. And then we go, went into flexibility. And we said, what did we learn? That um, fully flexible ism, they will always show the status, all the three status, Muslimun, Musliman, Muslimin. Partly flexible will show only uh, to Makkatu, 
makkata makkata so they are light and they are they only show status uh, um, you can just uh, see rafa and nasb and jar are always this they look the same they are not the same but they look the same makkata makkata and then um dunya 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 like non flexible we can't even tell the status by looking at them we have to know other things about it inshallah we will learn and then what are the fully flexible um default status most of the words all right so who um, most of the words in um, like muslim chart and most of the words are fully flexible then four arab prophets hudun shuaibun muhammad and salihun any letter word uh, any three letter word uh, will always be fully flexible like we did adanun adanan adanin all right here they have given nahnun nahnan nahnin uh, no no sorry no nun no nan no no hin but uh, no Uh, is a uh, Lut alayhi salam the name of the prophet, um, which are three letter will always be fully flexible, right? Now partly flexible. What is partly flexible? Uh, we said names of places, non Arab names. So Makkatu, Makkata, Makkata, Ibrahimu, Ibrahima, Ibrahima. Words that sound like this is this is something we didn't cover, but yeah, you can just read it. Don't worry too much again about it. Akbar, um, you know. comparatives inshallah body defects colors they are also partly flexible but just focus on these two more mostly non flexible are what only one form like you know we learned uh, like dunya musa haza all these words are non flexible all right we did ism we we covered ism mausul allazi um and then um allazi and allazina and then ism al ishara like haza hazihi right so they are all non flexible okay so this is so far what we have covered um and i hope there are uh, no confusions okay now alhamdulillah everything's clear so let's move on to our next topic number now number basically when you do muslim chart you're actually doing numbers as well so alhamdulillah in that way we cover the um we we actually cover we have covered numbers but there are different types let's look at them so there are three categories in number singular pair and plural as we all know so let me bring up the muslim chart Why is it not coming? Sorry, just give me a second. Right. So look at this. Like we did, Mufrad, Muthna, and uh, Jama. So um, Mus Muslim chart already is telling us singular, pair, and plural. All right. So inshallah, you should. You have already, alhamdulillah, done. in a way you have done the numbers so whenever it's singular in arab uh, in arabic we know that there is also pair and then there is plural so if there are two uh, if there are two things or two people they will always be treated as a pair okay so knowing that is important under plural we have all learned that normal masculine plural words ending with in una ina ending combination so they are normal masculine plurals so when you look at the una ina ending you know they are normal plurals and they are masculine normal feminine plurals atun atin ending combination we know that they are plurals okay now we are only focusing on plurals so focus on plurals at the moment so this this is una ina ending is always masculine plural okay atun atin ending feminine plural so we know these are normal plurals but there is another type in arabic which is called broken plurals what are broken broken plurals words that do not follow the sound plural ending so again like you know even in english so there are some uh, plurals that end in s like book books cat cats kid kids right normal plurals so you put an s it becomes a plural you put una ina it becomes a plural you put atun atin it becomes a plural but some words do not follow the expected ending for example tooth becomes teeth child become children sheep remains sheep so you know these are not normal plurals they are actually in in english they are called irregular plurals 
Um, so these in Arabic, the normal plural ending, una, ina, atun, at, all right? In Arabic plurals, the, the words that do not end with una, ina, or atun, atin are called broken plurals. You need to learn this definition. The words that don't, they, uh, that don't un, uh, end in the normal endings from uh, una, ina, or atun, atin are called broken plurals. Now, broken plurals have two. Uh, there are, they are two types of broken plurals. The first is human broken plurals, or the plurals that in, represent intelligent beings. So like, you know, child and children. We know ch children, child or is, um, and children are human beings, all right? So in Arabic as well, they have given us some examples like humans, jinn, or angels, ulama. So the singular of ulama is alim, right? Scholar, scholars. But the, the singular is alim, but the plural is not alimuna, it's ulama. So that's a norm, that's not a normal human, uh, normal plural ending. It's not an una ending, it's an it's a different ending, ulama. All right. So um it is a human broken plural. Rusul. So Rasu, uh, you know, so you say Rasulun, Rasulun, Rasulan, Rasulin, Rasulani, 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 then. When you come to plural, you say rusulun. So it's not rasuluna. You cannot say it. In Arabic, it's wrong. You say rus rusul. So when you ever see, whenever you see the word rusul, it means messengers, malaika, all right? Malak. Singular is malak, but plural is malaikatun, all right? It's a different. So they are called human broken plurals. And why are we learning about them? I mean, you have to learn because it's Arabic language, but also, when you put it in a sentence, human broken plurals can be treated as singular feminine. What does it mean? So when they write it, they can write, so you know, with, with the masculine ones, they will say haza, but with, with the feminine, uh, with the um, human broken plural, they can actually treat it as a feminine. They can say hazihi, all right? So remember they are treated, they can be treated as they are. They can say haza, but they can also say hazihi, um, um, right? Singular feminine, hazihi. So, um, um, but it doesn't mean that they are feminine, but they are treated like, this is the way Arabs spoke. So they will say she, instead of they, they will say she, they are prophets. They can, they can say she are, she are prophets. I mean, you can't translate that in, in English, but just remember it's treated as singular feminine. Is it clear? Inshallah, when we go into the, uh, the examples and uh, when we start doing the sentences, you will understand it more. But just remember that, that broken plurals, human broken plurals, they, are, they can be treated as singular feminine or based on translation. They can be treated as masculine and they can be treated as feminine. Okay, singular feminine, not just feminine. Then there are non-human -bro broken plurals. What does it mean? So these broken plurals like you know two teeth so this is uh, the first one was which uh, represent intelligent beings like humans jinns or angels the non-human broken plurals they represent non-intelligent beings example kutub so kitab kitab is the uh, singular but when it comes to plural it's not kitabuna it's kutubun kutubun masjid becomes masajid and kalp becomes kilab, right? So they are always treated as singular feminine. In Arabic, I don't know how many of you speak Urdu, but sometimes actually we do that in Urdu and probably Urdu speakers can understand it really well, but even, even if you don't speak Urdu, it's okay. But I'll just give an Urdu example for Urdu speakers. When we say kursi, when we talk about a chair in Urdu, we say kursi tood gai hai, gai. We say, we treat it as a feminine, or although it's it's not a feminine or masculine, yeah. Uh, but when we say a, a glass of water, we say glass toot gaya hai. So glass is treated as a uh, uh, you know so gai hai. So that that gai hai, or in or in English you can say singular feminine. So Arab always treated non-human broken plurals as singular feminine. Always remember that. Okay. So. 
just going uh, back again over these two human broken plurals um when they come into plural they they their pattern is different and how do we know whether they are rafa nas penjar because their ending will be exactly like a un an in so we will know that but how, how do we know they are plural at the moment you will only know because by translation at the moment we don't uh, we don't have any mean uh, means but inshallah when we learn more and more in arabic we will know immediately that this word is um, um, actually a plural right now how do we know we have to learn the vocabulary so when you see the word ulama you will or rusulun you should always remember that it's a um it's a plural and i'll give you an example actually in in our um, if you look at the beginning uh, i mean you don't have this book i don't know if you have this book i can actually send a copy if you guys don't have this uh but when we looked at, at the muslim charts on this page they had actually given the broken plural i didn't cover it because you were not aware of it but today i you can see so qalam is the singular okay so in singular and and a pair they are always the same don't worry about it when it comes to plural we are only looking at plurals today look at the plural, plural ending aqlamun aqlaman aqlamin so we can see the rafa nas penjar very clearly uh broken plurals um they show the status in even in plural so then nas penjar is always clear aqlaman aqlamin you know uh, kutubun kutuban kutubin so you will always remember uh, you will always be able to identify the uh, broken plurals um non human on human broken plurals uh, when it comes to rafana spenger um, they are very clear how do you know they are plurals inshallah like i said we will only know uh, because of our vocabulary so you have to build up your vocabulary and uh, learn about this okay so going back to number is this clear so look at this human broken plurals representing intelligent beings malaikatu rusulun ulama'u or ulama'un treated as she or what they really are basically what i said treated as singular feminine or based on translation non human broken plurals representing non intelligent being all non human broken plurals are treated as she or singular feminine okay she or singular feminine just remember that any questions please ask <laughs> yes right good um now are you uh you can unmute yourself if there is any question if there is no question then we will just look at a few words um there there will be a homework as well um right look at it so you will get the meaning so you know al mukazzibina they have done two examples for you al mukazzibina is immediately first look at the ending combination ina ending it's a plural ayatun now miraculous signs so aya one aya is aya ayat when it's ayat it means it's a um, singular feminine okay it's a uh, al jibala the mountains so we know it's a plural so what will we write plural how will you treat it as a singular feminine okay basharun a person okay so this is what you're going to write so if it's a plural you will write plural but if it's a broken plural you will always write here for your homework you will write singular feminine even though it's a broken uh, if it's a plural we will treat it as a singular and we will treat it as a fe fe feminine all right so they will call it they will say the arabic in arabs they'll say hazihi al jibala although it's not singular and it's not feminine but it is treated like that okay so this is how you're going to do it so if it's a broken plural now i have a chart for you so you can um easily look at it so look the following chart will help us understand how to treat different kind of plurals this chart is going to be your friend so you can use this chart as your in your homework as well when you look at it when you look at a word if it's plural always remember first it is has it has to be a plural if it's plural in meaning 
then you check is it human or is it non human if it's a non human broken plural simple you will treat it as singular feminine and um, there are two examples samawatun masajidun all right if it's human then you will check two things is it a broken plural or is it a normal plural if it's a normal plural it's based on translation you know mu'minina is a masculine and it's a plural you know talibatun is a feminine and it's a plural but when it's a broken plural then you go down and you what do you do treat it as a singular feminine or based on past so you can human human broken plurals can be treated in both ways sometimes a singular feminine or sometimes based on translation so you can say has um, you know you can say haza hazihi or you can say um haulai so you know like you can say both um inshallah when we do ismul ishara and when we do sentences you will understand but remember they are always treated as singular feminine at the moment just remember this that if it's a broken plural non human singular feminine if it's a human broken plural singular feminine or based on translation normal plural will be treated like a normal plural all right so i hope this is clear if this is clear and if you do the homework inshallah in the next class uh, we will do it one more time so then when you sit with your homework when you go when i know it some for some of you the class time is quite late so um, inshallah we will in the next week we will actually open the mushaf and we will look at some words but today i just want you to understand this look at the definitions learn the definitions plural is easy because alhamdulillah uh, sorry numbers are easy because alhamdulillah we have done uh, the plurals uh, in muslim chart so it won't be a problem uh, inshallah and if there is any question you can ask now um you can unmute yourself and ask and if there is no question then um inshallah we can sum up the class what is your homework your homework will be this exercise which i shared with you right okay alhamdulillah if it's clear that's good uh, if it's clear i want everyone to put a y in the chat box yes and if if there is any question you can unmute yourself and ask all right it's clear good alhamdulillah good good okay right so no question okay inshallah i'll share um, the notes with you guys and inshallah i will also um, you will have the homework page on that as well so your homework to homeworks um, um write a short essay about uh, the character characteristics of uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam um as we all know that to know him is to love him we know the more we know of, about our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the more we will be able to love him and we will be able to see why allah subhanahu wa taala has called him rahmatul lil alamin inshallah right and the next thing uh, thing is that you need to just look at the um, notes revise them and do the exercise which will be given to you inshallah and look after yourself may allah bless you all inshallah we will finish now subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik um look after yourself may allah accept um, our effort bless our learning and make us the people of quran ameen assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh